to the rock, sing to the tree, sing to the firefly, lighten up the sky, sing, sing to the sea. Hello, I'm Mary Whelan, and this is The Song, a show that presents songwriters, composers, and lyricists and their original songs. And today, I am very pleased to present from Augusta, Maine, Martin Swinger. Thank you, Mary. It's good to be here. Hello, everybody. I like to write songs about true stories, so I'd like to share a true story with you. I was cleaning, vacuuming the room, a carpet corner caught in the vacuum, burning rubber, a cracking sound, the motor faltered, investigation found I'd broken something fragile, shining, some little plastic part the little plastic part that makes the whole thing work designed by its creator to snap off with a jerk and leave the whole thing worthless it's never gonna start cause there is no replacement for that little plastic part There's good news, bad news, your stuff can be repaired But it'll cost more than it's worth to get inside of there There's tabs and switches, buttons, belts and springs And chintzy hinges infesting everything The gear that doesn't ratch, the cash that doesn't Catch it when it falls apart The little plastic part That makes the whole thing work Designed by its creator To snap off with a jerk And leave the whole thing worthless It's never gonna start Cause there is no replacement For that little plastic part The little plastic part Was once a dinosaur could be anything it's just a metaphor cause everything has got one part of the grand design the straw that breaks the camel i've discovered mine i wrote a letter did you get it i told you i loved you I don't regret it, but I didn't hear from you birthday or Valentine's. I'm a little slow, it took me a little time, but I finally got a clue what to expect from you. You didn't break my heart. Just the little plastic part. It makes the whole thing work Designed by its creator To snap off with a jerk And leave the whole thing worthless It's never gonna start Cause there is no replacement For that little plastic part For that little plastic part For that little plastic part thanks I hope you liked that true story I like to tell true stories speaking of true stories uh, my house got broken into a couple of weeks ago I do a lot of traveling and somebody broke in through the basement and ran through the house and stole stuff they weren't terribly destructive but they stole plenty of things and I was feeling kind of depressed about it for a while but um, then I reminded myself that the only way out of pers out of uh, depression is perspective so any of you who are feeling 
anyway depressed uh, uh, or uh, suffer from seasonal affective disorder like I do or if depression runs in the family like it does in mine. Um, this is a song for any of you who are feeling just a little bit down to give you some perspective and lift yourself up. When depression's got you feeling like a loser You're sucking mud not getting anywhere Surely hard times are a curse But things could always be much worse Consider the oyster for a moment if you dare An oyster leads a dangerous and stressful life Indeed his chance to live it all is mighty slim he can expect only one fate to end life on someone's plate. And until that, prospects are pretty grim. But why call him a he? Except for clarity, a normal oyster never knows from year to year whether he is he or she reversing sexuality till neither masculine nor feminine is clear. When he's a she, her energies are truly feminine. Single summer season when she's in her prime She'll spawn a million eggs with ease Send larvae squiggling through the seas And then become a he again as if she'd only changed her mind In 14 days the larva speeds through adolescence If he avoids the hungry fishy swimming by And as he floats he grows one foot and some cement to keep him put And if he thought at all he'd surely wonder why by surprise, she bumps into a clean, hard object. Our lucky spat attaches firmly to this home. He hopes to hide from prying eyes until she grows into some size. But she's stuck forever, never more to roam. And one would hope staying put would bring her safety. Extermination lurks in every tide. She lies immobile as a rock while enemies are taking stock. There is no running off. And there is nowhere else to hide. A hungry starfish wraps its arms around an oyster. Like a hideous lover forcing shells apart. Thrusts its stomach in between, creating quite an ugly scene. Digesting oyster sushi tartar a la carte. And there's a host of other dangers all around her. There's the boring sponge and then the oyster drill. There's the leech and the black drum to which an oyster could succumb. And even hungry ducks are known to eat their fill. If she escapes the duck leech, borer, sponge, and starfish, she must surrender as she's harvested and bought. And then some human cracks her up using her half shell as a cup and slips her slimy living body down his throat without a thought. So when you think you're at your lowest, life is over. Recall the oyster has one foot and you have two. You can kick yourself in the butt, get up and get out of that rut and make the most of life that God has given you. <laughs> I like that. That's a good song. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much, Mary. Thank you. Both are very good songs. Thanks. I appreciate that. Now, you're on your way home from? From Falcon Ridge Folk Festival, yep. which happens in Hillsdale, New York. Uh huh. Uh, the festival's been going on for 25 years. This is their 25th anniversary. So it's very exciting to be there. And uh, they have an emerging artist showcase every mm -hmm. year where out of about 400 entries, 25 people get selected to perform on stage two songs. And uh, I was very lucky to be one of those people that was oh, chosen to be great. on stage. Yeah. So and we're uh, lucky to have you stopping here on your way home. Thanks very much. It was perfect timing that yeah. it all worked out to be able to come here and, and visit you on the show. Excellent. Yeah. Now, um, if I uh, want to make sure people know how to find out more about you and oh, other yeah. gigs you'll be doing, sure. where can they find sure. more? Sure. I online? come through, I don't know when I'm performing in this area again, uh -huh. but I do travel around New England mm -hmm. quite a bit, uh, so uh, so I will be passing through. My name, again, is Martin Swinger, and that really is my name. So if you want to know more about me, you can just Google Swinger, and you'll end up in all kinds of very interesting places. <laughs> but if you put my first name, Martin Swinger, you'll find out about me. Yeah. Uh, you'll find out about uh, uh, my CDs. I've got, yeah, the, you got, that. Yeah, I've yeah. got several CDs. This is the latest CD right here. It's called Moon. 
uh, and it's a whole bunch of so I didn't put the title on the cover because I thought the artwork was too pretty to mess up. Oh. Uh, but um, it's an album called Moon, and it's got the oyster song, and it's mm-hmm. also got the, cons- uh, the uh, little plastic part song on it. And uh, you can find me online. You can find me on CD Baby is where you can find my CDs, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And uh, a lot of the radio stations also have my CDs, so you can check with WUMB or whatever public radios you get around here and ask mm-hmm. for Martin Swinger, and maybe they'll play something. That would be wonderful. (laughs) We can see. We can hope. And so it sounds like there's a lot of places online where people can find you. A lot of places that people can find you. Find your music. Mm -hmm. That's That's right. That's right. And I write songs for adults, but I do a lot of work with kids in schools. I teach songwriting and uh, work with kindergarten through fifth grades. Uh, I teach them songwriting, teach them about songwriting. It's language art. Uh, I love doing it. And uh, what we do is we write songs that are based on what they're studying in class. We write mnemonics to help them remember the information, like the ABC song. Uh, So I'll ask the kids what it is they're studying, what they're supposed to have a test on, and they'll talk to me about that. And as they explain it to me, I write it up on the board. And then we pick a song, a tune that's familiar to all of them so they know how the song goes. Mm -hmm. And I draw a blank version of the song on the board, and then the kids start constructing a song based on that. You have an example of that? I do. I have some great examples. I was working with a kindergarten class that had been to visit the nursing home, which was just up the street. And um, they were telling me what they experienced, what they learned about being in a nursing home. What we ended up writing together was, people in a nursing home wobble when they walk. Some can't hear, some can't talk. But if you hold their hand and listen when they talk, we all feel good. I thought it was pretty powerful Uh stuff that they got into that song. I had a second grade class that was studying uh, the civil rights movement, and they just read a book about Rosa Parks. So what they ended up writing was, Rosa Parks, Rosa Parks, got on the bus, got on the bus. The bus was going around the town. She got arrested for sitting down just because her skin was brown, and that's not fair, just not fair. I loved how they just brought it back to the simple fact of fairness. That's what I love about it is the kids always put it into their words, their own Mm -hmm. words, and it helps them remember it, and they really own those songs. So uh, I hope these songs go viral. One of my favorite ones Mm -hmm. ever, though, was the fourth grade class that was studying the digestive system. I was a little bit nervous about what they'd do with that, but they actually wrote a pretty darn good song about the bodily functions. Digestive system is the thing that gives us our nutrition. We use it every time we eat. Here's its composition. First the teeth chew up and down. Tongue moves food around. Food gets softened with saliva needed to get it down. Muscles in your esophagus push the food down more to the stomach where the juices really start to pour. Small intestine breaks the food down, turns it into energy, so blood vessels carry it all throughout me. Finally, the large intestine pushes through the body, squeezes with its muscles, and waste goes in the potty. Now for the work that you do in the schools... It's a different website people should go to? Uh, Yeah, my site for that, for the school work and the kids' work, is called swingersongwriter.com. It's my name, swingersongwriter.com. But if you go to my regular website, martinswinger.com, it says if you want to know more about the school work and family music, click Mm -hmm. here. And it takes you between the two, Uh between the two sites. So you can learn about me as a grown-up musician or as a a family musician. Uh, Um, Excellent. Yeah, okay. uh, but I'm also all over YouTube. If yeah. you go to YouTube and get Martin Swinger, uh-huh. you'll find tons of, Facebook too. tons of things on yeah, Facebook, yeah. of course, Martin mm-hmm. Swinger. So, okay. uh, so okay. yeah, I'm all over the place. Well, why don't you do another song? I would love to do then that. Then we'll talk a little bit more. So, yeah, I'd love to share another song with you. Uh, this is a song that I do in schools a lot. It's a song about my Uncle Hubert. My Uncle Hubert uh, was a farmer up in Missouri. He was a fisherman. Uh, he was a part-time preacher. And uh, Uncle Hubert was six foot three. He was the tallest man in my dad's side of the family. So Uncle Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. The biggest uncle I ever had asking me, do you want to go fishing? A bucket of minnows and tying a hook on the line. The biggest uncle I ever had Steering a boat over Lake Wapapella Soda in the ice chest Stories to pass the time And then he'd put fried fish and coleslaw And hush puppies on my plate 
for a boy of nine years old. It was the best meal that I ever ate. And then he'd pat me on the shoulder and tell me how much fun he'd had. Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. The biggest uncle I ever had. Changing gears on a John Deere combine, holding me up in the seat so I could lend a hand. The biggest uncle I ever had. He plowed straight rows like a race to a sunset, had a dry summer, and had to irrigate the land. His days were long and dirty, but he did his work with joy. Back home after supper, he'd fall asleep in the lazy boy. But he was in the field at sunrise, even after his back got bad. Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. The biggest uncle I ever had would speak from the pulpit on a Sunday morning. He'd sing about the gospel dwelling in Beulah land. The biggest uncle I ever had saying, let's all rise for all 100. He'd pass the collection plate and he'd shake your hand. His hands were rough and gnarly. His face was weathered skin, smelled like oats and barley, and he always wore a grin. And though I only saw him once a year, I never saw him mad. Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, the old gray gander's dead. The one she was saving, the one she was saving, the one she was saving to make a feather bed. The biggest uncle I ever had, he wandered off on a rainy evening. He went down the road and forgot how to find his way. The biggest uncle I ever had got lost in thought till his mind started slipping. When they found him, he didn't have a word to say. First he started losing keys and then he started losing time. The church, the farm, the family disappearing from his mind. When they called to say he passed away, made me sad. Cause Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. Yeah, Hubert was the biggest uncle that I ever had. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. I love sharing that story about uh -huh. Uncle Hubert with the kids. People don't talk to kids about Alzheimer's and things like mm -hmm. that, and so it just makes a really safe place for us to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And the kids will tell me about their grandmothers and grandfathers, yeah. and aunts and uncles, and that kind of thing. So it's a fun song to yeah. share with them. Now, since you work a great deal with kids, I have to ask you a question I often do ask uh, people, and that's one about what advice would you give to young people uh, who are interested in becoming songwriters uh, and indoor musicians? Well, a couple of things. If you want to be, if you want to be a good songwriter, I was very lucky in school that uh, I had a, an English teacher who turned me on to poetry. Now, a lot of people think, oh, it's all this Elizabethan stuff, but no, there are a lot of really great American poets like Robert Frost and Carl Sandburg who really tell wonderful stories and they choose really good language and they make them concise and that's exactly what songwriting is about mm -hmm. is about being able to tell a story in a short piece of time and so it was really good studying that kind of work and at the same time i was listening to uh, a lot of the uh, great american songwriters as well mm -hmm. of the time paul simon peter mm -hmm. paul and mary mm -hmm. uh, people like that so listen to the songwriters that are in your world today, but listen to a lot of different kinds of music. The more mm -hmm. kinds of music, classical music, opera, 
Cajun music, mm, French music, anything you can find, the, m the more music you listen to, the stronger musician you become because you learn a, a larger palette of music. And, uh, and it'll help you find more interesting things to do with mm -hmm. your music and make you a better musician as well. Yeah, and then the other side of it is business. Being a musician right. is all about business. It's about marketing, being able to write your own press releases, mm -hmm. being able to contact and communicate with newspaper people, uh, and being able to run your business, taking care of all the finances, keeping track of it all, being able to file your own taxes. Uh, so there is definitely a business side of it and a marketing side to it that while you're in school, while you're in college, take a business class, take a marketing class. It's fun, it'll challenge you, but it'll give you some really important tools uh, for being a performer later on. Well, that's good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, would you like to discuss your songwriting process a little bit? Okay. What that's like? um, yeah, I get inspired by a, by a lot of different things, like, uh, for example, the Little Plastic Part song that I started mm -hmm. out with was inspired really when I turned on the vacuum cleaner and it broke right in front of me and I realized you know, this kind of thing has happened before some little piece of plastic breaks and renders whatever it was unusable I've heard a million little plastic part stories people are always coming and telling me mm -hmm. and so uh, I you know I got inspired about the idea of writing about that song but even as I was working on it and working on the chorus uh, how to tell this story uh, I realized that that um, the little plastic part is kind of a metaphor for life in a lot of ways that sometimes one little thing will happen and it changes everything that follows mm -hmm. uh, so I decided that yeah okay this song can tell two stories it can be about that little piece, piece mm -hmm. of plastic that irritates us all when it breaks uh, but then it can also be about that larger thing that little maybe that little piece of plastic in your heart that changes the way you look at things for the rest of your life mm -hmm. so uh, so I like I like things that inspire me people inspire me good stories that inspire me uh, uh, spiritual just trying to help people realize that we're a lot more alike than we are different yeah. and trying to find those universal truths and remind people of that is what i'm trying to do as a musician okay. uh yeah i don't care whether i'm playing bars or what kind of thing like that that's not the kind of music i like i like music that really uh, engages people's imagination mm -hmm. engages their thought processes wonderful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well um, before you close out with some more music, um, just want to make sure people know how to find you online. Great, and great. Thanks very much. Again, my name is Martin Swinger, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, uh, and Swinger, just like it sounds, it's an old German name, it was mm -hmm. Schwanger, but, uh -huh. uh, but uh, then Americanized to Swinger. I have no idea what my ancestors did, but they must have had a lot of fun. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> so you can look me up YouTube. I'm all over YouTube. You can mm -hmm. look up Martin Swinger online, mm -hmm. and you'll probably find both of my websites, my uh -huh. adult music website as well as the uh, children's family music and uh, arts education okay. website, swingersongwriter.com. Well, let's hear some more music. Okay, I'll give you one more song. This is kind of a silly and fun song. Sometimes it's very important to just have fun. I had a really good friend who was a dancer. She loved all kinds of dance. And um, I was in a band with her. She was the percussionist. So she would dance on a board and they'd have a microphone pointed at that. She figured out one time that she ran about, danced about 40 miles per night uh, working that gig. But it was a lot of fun working with her. So I wanted to write a little song for her that incorporated every kind of dance I could think of. It's a song called Put On Your Dancing Shoes. Feel free to push the uh, furniture out of the way in the living room and have a party. You like to rumble, I like to rock and roll. Somewhere in the middle, gonna shake it just a little and give this old body some soul. Only takes two to tango, two for the cha cha cha. A little do si do with a chicken and a crow and a whole lot of la de da. Come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna jump it up and down, gonna shake it all around when we put on our dancing shoes. Come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna stomp around and wiggle, spin until we giggle when we put on our dancing shoes. What well, we'll do the menu at now. We're gonna poke across the floor. 
We're gonna tap across the ceiling with a rhythm and a reel and take a break until we dance some more. Now, now, jazz is a smoky number. Ballet is full of class. Cajun is a dilly when we're swinging willy nilly and swing takes a lot of brass. So come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna jump it up and down, gonna shake it all around when we put on our dancing shoes. Come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna stomp around and wiggle, spin until we giggle when we put on our dancing shoes. We're gonna two step down to Texas. We're gonna trust on in Baltimore. We're gonna boogie till it's late at the good old Golden Gate and clog on the Eastern Shore. Going Kate walking in Atlanta. We're gonna disco at NYC. Don't make me beg, baby. Come on, shake a leg, baby. Why don't you dance with me? Come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna jump it up and down, gonna shake it all around when we put on our dancing shoes. Come on, put on your dancing shoes. Why don't you put on your dancing shoes? We're gonna stomp around and wiggle, spin until we giggle when we put on our dancing shoes. Put on our dancing shoes. We're gonna put on our dancing shoes. Come on, put on our dancing. Put on our dancing. Put on our dancing shoes. Thanks very much for listening.